I have this very special hope from God today. Oh boy. This year for me is turning out to be an incredible time. Incredible. If there's anyone that shared a testimony in your life, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That this year is has turned is turning out. Amen. To be a phenomenal year in our lives. Yes. If this is your testimony, you share it with me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask to shout, not whisper. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read with me the first Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, read with me verse 13 through verse 18. Shall we read? Read. <laughs> Shall we read together? Two, three. Do you not know that they which minister of our holy things uh -huh. live of the means of the temple? Uh -huh. And they which wait at the altar and partake to the altar. Even so, the Lord will take that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Mm -hmm. But I have used none of these things.
festivities that had no glorifying to God, they became excessive tongue talkers. Tongues became their ready uh, way of living. Whenever they gathered, they would give exercise to the gift of tongues more than anything else. And Paul, in his writing to the Corinthians, made very, very clear declarations about things that they should and should not do. But when it came to his personal need, he identified <coughs> an obvious activity. The, the activity is that those who minister uh -huh, in the temple, those who serve at the altar, are partakers of the offerings of that altar. Amen. Uh, but he made this bold declaration that he has not used that privilege. Yes, amen. The privilege that to be fed yes. by the good of the altar. Amen. He made no claim to it. And what I looked at was an activity that throws me into a great place. The place that I went to and I was able to look at the life of Paul in a very different way because being a student of the word and knowing how to do an exegesis of the word through homiletics and humiletics and homiletics and all of those things I'm aware of those things. Those things are easy for me to do. I know how to get to the Greek, pulling from the Hebrew into the Greek and finding definitions to the Latin and going back and forth in them. I can do those things easily. That's easy. I can pull those pieces and dot my eye and cross my T and connect the dots. I can do those things easily. Like Paul was able to do also. Having such ability to maneuver himself with words and within the gifts that was given to him to exercise. But he unfolded a very unique way of living that I found rather interesting in that he identified certainly that this is my right to be able to partake of the gifts of the altar, but I've not used that way. I've not used the way that others have taken. To have eaten the good of the altar. I have not gone that way. Uh, the way that I've taken has to do with what God assigned to me. <laughs> uh, the assignment that God placed on my life has to do with what I'm called for. And necessity is laid upon me. In other words, the gifts are at the altar, but it's not strong enough to keep me at the altar. Uh, the good that I can get, the good that I can uh, arrive with from preaching the gospel and from giving myself to it, uh, there is something much more than that that is stirring on the inside of my being. Uh, what is stirring upon my life is necessity. Uh, it's a kind of a calling that has nothing to do with the gifts you can give to me. You may give me a gift today and I will forget your name by tomorrow. You may say good things to me today and change your mind tomorrow. Ah, uh, the good pail of milk that someone will give today, their own foot will throw it down. And the good that someone will announce about you today, Mankind have ways to change their mind about you. Uh, just do something that they don't like. Huh? And all the good that you would have done would end up in no man's land. Huh? But Paul, Paul, knowing, knowing, knowing where God is taking him to.
to. He had need to announce a greater way of living. The living that he now announces that necessity is laid upon me. There is something much more than what I've been drawn by. There is something much more that others have announced. There is a mantle, there is a calling, there is a pressing, there is a moving inside of my being that I cannot really explain. There is not words enough to explain what God is doing inside of me. There is not enough words to explain the shifting and the moving and the pulling. But what I do know, it's a necessity. What I do know is the pull within me is greater than my words. The pull within me is greater than the gifts. The pull within me is greater than what you can ever give to me. So he goes to a place by saying this. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. Yes, amen. It is because of the necessity that is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Yes, amen. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. If I do it willingly, if I give myself willingly Amen. to what necessitates, yes. I have a reward. Amen. I have a reward amongst men. Yes. Amen. I have a reward amongst great men. I have a reward in the system. Yes. I have the right to eat of the altar Amen. because I labor there. But the necessity that I'm referring to is not what I do willingly. Yes. Come on. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> the necessity is not what I do when I'm happy. The necessity is not what I do when everybody likes me. The necessity that I that I'm referring to is not when everything is good. Because when I do things willingly, it's because I'm friends with everybody. <laughs> when I do things willingly, it's because I have nothing to fear. I am not concerned about this or that or the other because I'm willing. I'm willing to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to give the extra coin or the dollars or the hundreds. I'm willing to do those things. It's not a problem for me. I can do it and I'll do it tomorrow again because I'm willing. It's an amazement how willing people live good. It's an amazement how willing people shout their praises. It's an amazement how willing people have much to shout to God about. Because in willingness, God offers the benefits. Willing people shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Willing people shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Not much people are willing. <laughs> willing people shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We understand that in doing my assignment, willingly, I have my reward. Yes. Every last one of us has an assignment from God yes, to fulfill. Yes. Whether that assignment is to move from point A to point B, you have an assignment from God. Amen. But if I do this assignment willingly, oh boy, I have nothing to boast about. Mm. My willingness is not what I'm going to be boasting about because I'm simply willing. I'm willing to come to the prayer meeting. <laughs> oh, I'm willing to be in the Bible study. I'm willing to do what you ask me to do. I'm willing because I have what it takes. So I'm willing to press my way. <laughs> As you bring my strength to the Lord, I'm 
willing. And he says, I have a reward. <laughs> I have that kind of reward. But I have nothing to glory and boast about. Because this is what I'm simply willing to do. Have you ever seen how folk, willing people, how they behave? Willing people have a praise, y'all. Willing folk have a praise. They're so happy. Glory to God. They've done something good. And they want to be announced before mankind. They do something so good that you dare not call their name. Because I've labored with my whole heart. Whatever you wanted, I've been there. Whatever you wanted, I, whatever you asked me, I've been there. I labored with you. Amen. I labored for you. And I did it willingly. At the beck of his call, you can call me at any time. And I've been there. My willingness is noted. But what happens when God put a call on your life and you're not willing? Wow. What happens when God presses your heart and you're not willing? Wow. Wow. What happens when God speaks to you on the inner man but your natural circumstances is not going to allow you to respond? <laughs> What's going to happen uh, oh, when God speaks to the inner man? Uh, and everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Oh yes, and you win this. What happens when God presses an assignment in the heart and no one is going with you? Oh God. What happens when God speaks so deep on the inside and the voice of God is clear and authentic, but everything on your life says no? Ah, Jesus, see. What happens when everything? around you is fighting against you and every time you try to move every time you try to get up as if you're pushed down but something is moving on the inside of your spirit and says get up again glory be to Jesus what happens when you are not willing if you can give me a little volume I, I want to make this Jesus what happens when everything around you is fighting against you? What happens when you have no help on the right and no help on the left? And everything in between have a voice against you? What happens when you are not willing to move a step further or do one more thing? But God still says, I called you with an assignment. But everything around us is working against what we know. What happens when I'm not willing to do it? Mm. I have looked at how people live. You can get them when they're willing. But you can never get them when they don't want to say it. I don't want to do it. You have it when they're willing. You have it. You have the support. You have the building up. You have the money. When they're willing. But when you're not willing, what happens then? God speaks to our heart. And we're just not willing to move. God speaks on the inner man and we're not willing to do anything to change it because every circumstance around us is testifying against the willingness to move. Amen. When I'm willing, I'm happy. Yes. When I'm willing, I want to move. Yes. Amen. When I'm willing, I want to press. Amen. When I'm willing, I'm going to pray. Amen. When I'm willing, I'm going to study. But what happens when God is speaking and I'm not willing to do anything? I'm not willing to move one step in any 
direction. As if the road has stopped. As if the heavens are closed. As if I cannot press any further or do anything different. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was boasting when I was willing. I was shouting when I was willing. Every testimony I gave is because I was willing. But what happens when my body has a testimony of its own that's not working with what God is saying? A disease, an impairment, a neighbor, a co-worker, a so-called friend that will rise up against you. What happens when you're not willing? If you do it willingly, you have a reward, certainly. But what is entrusted upon me? What is deeper? What is deeper than when I'm not willing? If I do it willingly, I have a reward. But if I against my will, if what I know God is saying to me, I'm going to do it. Against my pain. Yes. If what God is saying to me, I'm ready to go against the grain. Yes. If what God is saying to me, I'm going to do it if I have your help or not.
I do it, willingly, that's when my boasting comes in. But if I do it, when I'm not willing, and it's against my will, I'm doing it because there is an entrustment to stewardship. I'm doing it because God entrusts me with a deeper call. And it's a call to stewardship. What God is after is our stewardship. Not what we will give willingly. Because stewardship is not dependent. Why is this man going lower? Is it my voice that is going lower? I will throw this mic away. When I shake it, uh -huh. let me go with my own mind. Forget this mic. Three days of a commercial break. Intermission. When I have no friends to call upon. When no one peers me up in prayer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What happens when I'm trying to explain this to my person? <laughs> to the very next person that I come so dear. What happens when that person says, you're hearing something else? No. No. I'm trying to tell you that what God is saying is a call to stewardship. Stewardship is not palatable. In stewardship, there is that which is called discipline. And one of the areas that we definitely don't want is discipline. Deal with me in any manner. Don't deal with me with discipline. I can tolerate you, but I can't tolerate you when you're against me. Stewardship has discipline. Yes. Where I have to discipline my life. Yes. Where I have to discipline my emotions. I have to discipline my desires. I have to discipline my inner man. I have to discipline my outward circumstances. I have to line up when it's not palatable. I have to line up when it's not comfortable. I have to line up when no one is there with me. It's amazing when people shout when everybody's around. But where is your shout when it's needed? Oh when no one is around, when you're faced with a life by itself, and you've got to find a place on the inside of your being to stand in spite of what life says to you. Amen. Stewardship demands discipline. Yes. You can tell a believer everything else. But every time you're going to touch an issue of discipline, you're going to meet a different color of a being. Some folk, their face will bend up in places you will not even, oh, good God Almighty, just try to discipline someone. You will see the true nature come out. Tell someone the truth. When God is after stretching, there is something sitting right before you. Oh, God Almighty, one cannot press it. Any, any, anywhere in God, in stewardship, don't stand up. The greatest call that God has for our life is the call to stewardship. The unwillingness that I don't want is really where it should go. Have you ever seen more people take correction? The whole persona changed. It was a smile before. Hello, correction. Because folk don't like to be told anything. I will laugh with you, but don't correct me. I'll even cry with you, but don't tell me what I'll need to do. I'm grown. I'm grown. But the call that Paul is referring to, the willingness that God is talking about, is the willingness to accept our life that requires discipline. Yes, amen. 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 There is no way we can live as unto God under the government of stewardship if we will not discipline our lives. Amen. Yes. There are some places we just have a 
When discipline is working, the next call that stewardship demands is obedience. I will obey only if I'm happy. I will obey only if it's good for my ears. <sighs> Some believers, they are so high-minded. Correcting them is opening a warfare. If you were friends, that friend who ends the day correction steps in. Obedience. All of the sacrifices we make before God, God said, I don't want it. I don't want your burnt your incense. I don't want your offerings. I don't want nothing. If I can't have your obedience, I don't want you. Amen. Amen. I do not want you if I cannot have your obedience. Amen. Stewardship demands obedience. It demands it. It doesn't ask of us. It demands it. It's not a request. It's a demand to obey. Trusting in God with all of our hearts and leading not to our own understanding. There are things that God will tell us to do that doesn't meet our likelihood. There are some things that is very difficult to obey. Shall we visit Abraham after waiting for years to get a son that God will tell me kill the same son you told me to wait for? But what God was after was the obedience in him. Was not that child? Because I could bring many more. What I was after is your obedience. If you're willing to go the extra when I say you would, and you should. What he was after was the obedience. Obedience does not look for a plan B. There is no plan B in obedience. It is either obedient or disobedient. There is no middle ground. None. Obey regardless of the cost. And I guarantee you, some things are difficult to respond to when God is saying it. Some things are hard to do when it comes from the mouth of God. Because it carries such a weight. But what the, the, the situation is not because God is trying to be unjust. He, what he's after is stewardship. That's what he's after. And most of what we are faced with or he's facing is because we are not responding to stewardship. We respond to what makes us happy. We respond to what makes us move. The congratulations, the accolades, the money, the fame, the claim. We do things when it suits us. But when it comes to stewardship, and we got to discipline our lives, we reject it. When it comes to obedience, we, we, we do not ever step into the place because obedience will cost us. Obedience is not free. There are things in obedience that demands a yes. And it demands a no at time. Stewardship. Also, oh, not just have obedience, not just willingness in that way, but church and almost always have no map, no road map. Church has no road map. It is as you begin the journey, God gives you step by step. To everyone God dealt with, he gave them the beginning where it begins. He gives them the end and tells them, work it out between. Stardom has no roadmap. 
God opens another way. And when you get there, he opens another one. Because there is no roadmap in stewardship. It's simply step by step. There is no freebie. There is absolutely no freebies in stewardship. Brothers and sisters and everybody in between, stewardship is going to cost us. And what I've seen, it is so glaring, it is so plain, it is so clear for me to see it now. at the parable when he was saying it he said that there is this man who had two sons one said to him he told them do this for me the one said so that willingly he ran off and did not do it the other one he said do it and he said uh -uh, I can't but because his father asked him, he left saying, no, I will not do it. But his heart cannot go against his father's wishes. He would not allow his heart to say no. Even when everything on the outside was saying no, on his, in his heart he said, no, I cannot go against my father's wish. So what he did, he went ahead and did it. So when the report came, Jesus asked, who is the one that is justified? The one who said yes and did nothing? Or the one who said, judge it as a moment, did it anyway? Because when you are unwilling, that's when stewardship steps in. Because stewardship is greater than your willingness. Stewardship is greater than your willingness. You can be willing to do anything because you're happy about it. But well, stewardship does not depend on whether you're happy or not. Stewardship does not make it palatable. It demands obedience. It demands it. And there is no roadmap for it. He allows you to walk step by step. Look at the patriarchs. Look at the prophets. God did not give none of them a roadmap. Step by step. No roadmap. And finally, without no roadmap, stewardship has this, and it's very important that you catch this. Very important. Stewardship, you're called to walk alone. Uh oh. Stewardship did not say, I'll be alone. Stewardship says, you're going to walk alone. <laughs> because in stewardship, God is not talking to me as he's talking to you. What he's saying to you, it all gels together, it all comes together in the kingdom. But what he's after is the willingness on the inside of your heart. He wants the obedience inside of your heart and most times you have to walk alone to get it. Most times you've got to walk alone because you're not anybody. People will go with you only so far and folk will do only so much but you can't go any further because God will not allow them. He will not allow them only so far and so much. Because there comes a time in our lives where we've got to cut the shore lines. We've got to keep it cut the umbilical cord and say, Lord, I give you a yes. Amen. I give you a yes, God. Wherever you lead me, yes. Wherever you send me, yes. Whatever you want me to do, yes. God, I give you my yes and I need it. Yes, Jesus. Amen. I need my yes. Not the ones that we say because we're happy about some of the good things. The one that says, I will press beyond my pain. Hallelujah. I will press beyond my life circumstances. 
I will press beyond my need. I will press beyond my fears. I will press in spite of it all. Amen. When nobody is going with me, I'm going to press anyway. Because it's not palatable. It's torture is what God is after. And most times we're never willing because it costs too much. God will allow everything to go bad. Everything. What will go bad will go bad because he's after stewardship. Is it? Uh, it's nice when people talk good about us and say nice things and be happy. But what about when everybody's saying something about what God is doing is working it out so you can step up to him. Because if your dependency is because of others, if you're being with God is because somebody else is coming. Something is wrong with that picture. If your response to God is because somebody else is provoking you to do it, you, that's not a yes. If your response to God is because your friend is going, or your brothers or your sisters is going, or because your friend is there, that's not a yes. A true yes is when it's you before God and you alone. When your response to God is determined by who you are on the inside and what God is after on the inside. It is so easy when our friends is going. When we have our wives on board and our children on board. But what happens when they stand against you? What is after stewardship? That's what he's after. And we will not give it because it's not a real yes. When we give God a real yes, something shifts in our lives. When it's a real yes, and it's amazing, we think we can trip and con God. We give him a mouth yes. The mouth says a yes, but the heart says no. Oh, Jesus. And God, can, God is the reader of the heart. Yes. Amen. And the search of the man, he knows if that yes is real or not. Yes. I say yes, amen. Some people say yes only because I want people to hear. I say yes. But they read what they really mean is no, I ain't going. And I ain't doing what you ask. Wow. I am doing it. Yes, Lord, yes. The most prayerless people is the people who say but they're not yes, but they don't mean it. When you say yes to God, everything in you respond yes. Yes. Amen. yes. You just can't sleep in your bed like others do. You come to prayer. Yes, amen. Because it's a yes you give God. Yes. You just don't want to mess up. You just don't want to mess up because you gave God a yes. Your yes is important. Yes, I will. Yes, God, I said yes and I meant it. Job said yes. <laughs> and everything around him was negative. Everything worked against him, but on the inside of his heart, he said yes. And what he said, he said, don't he slay me. Yet will I, Yet will I serve him. <laughs> because my yes is not dependent on what the circumstances is. My yes is an authentic yes from the heart. And don't he slay me. Yet will I serve him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego give God a yes. He gave, they gave God a yes. And the king said, that yes is going to give you trouble. He said, they said, bring it on. <laughs> In the language of today's world, bring it on. In other words, you cannot touch this. Yes, amen. My yes goes beyond that flame. My yes goes beyond that fire. Throw me in. Your yes is so deep that even if they say I will kill you, go ahead. How fast? Say when? How long? That yes gave God a yes. He gave God a yes. They throw it to the lions. 
Your yes in the face of difficulty does not stand a chance. Your di the difficulty does not stand a chance when you have a real yes. When you give what a real yes, you will find the time to pray. When even you have to cut things to make it time to pray, you will find the time to pray because your yes demands time to pray. Your yes demands time to study God's word. No one giving God a yes and will not study his with the word of the Lord. The yes means God, I will study to show myself approved. The yes means I will go against the grain regardless of what it costs me because I'm giving you a yes. The yes demands a walk with God as you have never had before. It's a serious walk because you gave God a yes. God interprets the yes more than anything else. God is not impressed by gifts and talents and abilities. God is not impressed with those things. You can have money flowing through your ears. God is not impressed with that money. He's not impressed about talents and gifts. He's impressed about a yes. And whether you need it or not. When somebody needs a yes, everything responds. Everything. God, I give you a yes and I mean it. I mean what I say, God. I mean it. Regardless of the circumstances, I give you a yes. And I'm doing it, God. I'm doing it. Have you given God a yes? Or are you still playing with your response? Have you said yes to God when you really didn't mean it from the heart? And everything around you testifies about that. Because anybody who says yes to God, their life begins to grow. Because the law of yes says, you're going to grow. The law of yes says, I am with you even to the ends of the world. The yes says, regardless of what I have to face, those things are not strong enough to destroy my hope in God. I will do it whether I'm willing or not because it's a call to stewardship. This is the word of the Lord. It's a call to stewardship. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach a gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel, that I don't abuse it. There is so much abuse of power with the, with the gospel. Because I can do this and do that and the other, but there is no testimony that validates what that yes is. Some people say yes, but the world is saying yes greater than what their heart is saying. You cannot take coals in your vesture and your bosom be not burnt. Is that possible? Sweet and bitter water do not come out of the same fountain. When I'm young, okay. That's why he said foolishness is bound up in that heart. But it's a rod of correction that will take it out. God let it loose on me. Let it loose on me. Because you have to store chip in me. Today, brothers and sisters, make no mistake, what God is after is stewardship. The things that are happening in our lives is because God is after stewardship. The difficulties we're facing is because God is after stewardship. The turmoil and the shifting and the, the gear changes in our lives and marriages and home and children and our job, the reason why it's shaking the way it's shaking is because God is after stewardship. Give God a yes and mean it. And watch what God will do. Give him a yes. I mean it. I need that you will judge your response to God. Whatever your yes was really a no. Or if your yes was a yes, why have you not grown? Why have you not grown? 
You cannot be in the same place going around in circles when you have an authentic yes. Amen. Because an authentic yes, the law of an authentic yes is that God opens different doors as you continue to grow in Him. Your desire for God is maxed because it's an authentic yes. Take my life and let it be. Consecrate it, Lord, today. Take my moments and take my days and cause it to flow in ceaseless praise. A yes takes you to where God wants you to be. We sang the song just now, I want to be where you are. Uh -huh. That demands a yes. A yes to stewardship. Can God trust you? Can he trust you? For a yes. Stand to your feet. <laughs>